Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, welcoming adversity, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the owner of Bill Wyland Galleries. He is Bill Wyland, and today we are going beyond the fires. Hey, Bill, hey. welcome to Beyond the Lines. Hey, Rusty, it's good to see you, buddy. Good morning. Bill, you and I, we know each other for so long, and you've been such a, I mean, you're a great friend, and you, you help our community in so many ways. Your brother is the world famous artist, Wyland, and your gallery was in Lahaina, Maui on Front Street. But before we get into that, I want to go back to that day of the fires. Can you share when you first became aware that something was was wrong? Absolutely. And it came really early. It came uh, by, I get up early every morning. So I was getting up around 5.30 in the morning and went to turn on the lights and there was no light. So that, that day started really early with horrendous winds and, you know, it, it pretty much knocked out the power in Lahaina early. So first thing in the morning, I was going to find some candles to light things up so I could see where I was at, but I, I was living in the building there in, in Lahaina. So Bill, what, what, what happened after that? I mean, when did you first start to realize or see the fire or smell the smoke? Well, that came much later. I actually went from when I got up in the morning, there was no power. Uh, I decided to go into uh, Kanapali and see if I could find a hotel that had some power or whatever, so I could do whatever I was going to do. It was a uh, was really windy, but I didn't think it was that big of a deal at the time. But, uh, you know, when I got to Kanapali, the the palm trees were bending over like they were completely going to come down. Everything was you know, probably 80 mile an hour winds. Uh, they were doing barbecue because they had no power either. So pretty much the whole west side of Maui was completely out. Uh, I didn't really think that was no big deal at the time. It wasn't until I actually got back into Lahaina. I, was, I took the Harley down to, uh, down to Kanapali to find a place to get something to eat and kind of do my emails or try to find internet and cell phone service. Uh, but when I was coming back, it was even, even on a bike that big, it was blowing all over the road. Uh, I set off my staff. I had a, a gallery director that was in, uh, Michelle was in my store and I called her from Kanapali and I said, it's getting really crazy. You need to go home. I said, there's no need for you to be in the store. There ain't no one crazy enough to come out uh, with 80 mile an hour wind. So she, she went on her way and thank God she did. I, I came in probably half an hour after that. And that's when it was, the, the winds were just howling. And I could see the smoke start on the other side of the road um, to Lahaina on the main road up by the, the gas station. I could see smoke just starting to billow. So I I parked the car. I mean, I parked the bike and parked it in the back of the gallery. And I actually walked out <laughs> to where Timo's is, uh, looked over there, tried to look over the building. I walked down to Dickinson Street. And I saw one of my, my employees that's retired and I seen him and I said, man, I said, this is looking brutal. Those, uh, those uh, flames are coming, gonna come over the top of the road. And sure enough, I said, we better get back and get out of town because this is, this is definitely coming over the top of the road. You know, and uh, Lahaina being a matchbook that, you know, can light up with a match, uh, pretty scary place to be. So I hightailed it back to the gallery and, uh, it was, it was really, you could see the flames were over the road by that time. Uh, and I could see it was on the Lahaina side of, of uh, the road. So that's when I really said, man, this thing is, this thing is, this thing is going to get ugly. So I ran upstairs and I grabbed my backpack and my computer and my passport. I didn't even go to my safe. It was, it was coming that quick with those winds, the way they were going, it was howling. So I didn't even go open up a safe or anything like that. I left the safe. I left everything. I went back to the back of the gallery. I got about 11 parking spaces back there and I have trying to decide in my mind which way I should go. And I probably made the right decision because I decided to get on the motorcycle rather than the car. I had my car parked there as well. So I jumped on the motorcycle and, uh, and it was, that's the part where I knew I was in deep shit. 
uh, there was the winds were howling 80 miles an hour or so in the back of the building it was swirling flames I mean the flames were literally swirling around that uh, around my feet around the, the I could feel the you know the fire on the back of my neck I mean it was that that intense the heat was insane but uh I I took the bike and I took it decided to take the bike and I took it out to front street when I got to front street both both directions were already a, a dead stop. There was no one moving anywhere. Dickinson was uh, closed up. Lahaina Luna was com- closed up. Uh, I had one person. I couldn't go to the right anyway. I was going to go to Kanapali side, and they couldn't. You couldn't move one centimeter. So I decided to go left, and someone let me out out, out on the road. And immediately I got uh, cut up on the motor. I got the motorcycle up on the uh, the, the sidewalks. And there was no one walking, of course, because it was really crazy. And it was, it was, you could see the flames up behind you in the real rear moves. So I got up on the sidewalk. I started going. The, the, the craziest part was there was a guy in front of me, like he was in a trance. He was on a bike, a regular bike. And he was, and I, you could see him and he was going. And I was beeping at him, like, can you just move over a little bit so I can get the Harley by you? He had no part of it. He was just, he was just going in a full on trance. I don't know if he made it or he didn't make it out of there, but it was, uh, I finally went off the curve and, you know, Harleys are pretty, pretty hard to come up, up and down curves, but when you're scared out of your mind, I guess you can, you can jump some curbs. So I jumped off the curb, jumped back up on the curb, went up the sidewalk and, uh, you know, and it was, it was so, so intense. You could just see flames everywhere. This was probably 430 in the afternoon. So it was, it was becoming pretty radical at that time. And I just, uh, I just, decided I'm going to make it out of there. And it's, you know, there's that point in your life and it's happened a couple of times, I guess, in everybody's life where, you know, it's, that's, you're in the real deal. It's either going to get, you're going to get out or you're going to, you know, you're going to not go out. It was that time. Had I not took the Harley, I'm a hundred percent sure. Had I not took the Harley and I took the car, I would have had to been swimming, you know, and I knew some of the people that didn't make it, that did try to swim for it. Uh, and, uh, so it was, uh, it was a good thing I made the right decision on the motorcycle rather than uh, than the car. But uh, so to end the story, I, I got on Front Street. I went up uh, the sidewalks. I drove all the way up to 505. And and uh, it, what was really weird, and, and it's tell you how intense it really was for people that they were in kind of a trance, is I got in, once I got past 505, I got into the wrong lane. And there was literally, you know, no one in the wrong lane no one coming you know coming towards Lahaina so to myself I'm thinking well if I went out there and I'm in the bike why wouldn't everybody follow me because it was dead stop I mean every road there was nowhere to take a left to get into the you know you to to take a left anywhere everything was completely clogged I mean clogged clogged where you couldn't move an inch and I got into the left lane and I'm thinking to myself my god why is no one following me I think it's just it was so so intense that people were just like the guy in the uh, on the bike I think he would, they weren't thinking. So I just, I took that all the way till I got to the, I got to the main highway. And you've heard, you've heard people talk about there being barricades, right? I'm sure you've, you heard there was barricades. Well, I got to uh, where, where the front street ends and, and goes off to, to Kihei and it was a barricade and there was a police officer there, but I was in kind of a bit of a shock and I knew what was behind me. So I didn't stop at the barricade. I can just got to the right lane and uh with the motorcycle i was able to just go on the side side and i i dro- took it up to wailea ended up staying at one of my artists's place for the night then they were waking me up in the middle of the night and they said now that's on fire i'm going i'm not getting out of bed man i'm too tired i said i said if you see fires if you see flames wake me back up but i'm, I'm getting some sleep it was uh it was a it was a wild night but i, so I, Bill- I mean Bill, did did center. you lose did you lose your house? Yeah, I sure did. I as a matter of fact, uh, that's the hardest part too. I just finished it. I just pretty much finished my penthouse up there. I had, uh, you know, I built thirty five hundred bottles of wine. I didn't get my wine yet. I was just you know going through my last permit to to go ahead and fill up my wine cellar, and I had pool tables and hot tubs, and you know I had a pretty pretty. You know, because I was starting to spend a lot of time on Maui. So I built a really, really, really nice place on top of the gallery up on the third floor. Because I had three floors, two floors that were regular and then one floor that I was building into a, a place uh, to stay when I was up there. But yeah, the whole thing built burnt up. So Bill, you know, you're, 
I mean, I want everybody to see the Bill Wyland galleries in Lahaina. I mean, your store was absolutely beautiful. Um, located right on front yeah, street where I actually everybody had 30, knows artists there yeah so and you it was um i mean 31 artists it was one of the bigger galleries in, in in the state you would always promote so many artists um so many of their artwork and i you know you in your store i mean you have so many beautiful paintings and sculptures even yeah. um I, I remember going into your store and just being so amazed because I'm just assuming there's going to be just paintings, but you had so many sculptures as well, right? Yeah, I probably had as much sculpture as I did paintings. I had, I had an incredible amount of glass inside there. I had bronze. I had stainless steel. Uh, so yeah, my, my range of different art in that store, because it was so big, uh, it, the, the range was as deep as anybody in the art industry. I mean, that was definitely the biggest gallery I, I built. Uh, you know, the only one that was close to it is the one that was in Waikiki on the corner where everybody thought I owned the building. That was the Ana building down there. And I had my name up in front of that thing. And I'd have friends come into town and say, wow, do you own that whole building? And also, we, it's, uh, also it was as I had to sign on the corner of the building, it looked like I owned the building. But uh, yeah, that was that was also a really big store. Bill, so, I, I remember your Waikiki store. I mean, it did look like that was the Wyland building. <laughs> exactly. I had a lot of people feel that way. So I now, uh, yeah. now, Bill, after the fire, you went back to recover the sculptures or just to see what was left. Um, tell tell me about that. Yeah, what what happened is uh, we uh, two days later we were trying to get things back for the people we, you know i had friends that had water and generators and they were having we were having a really really time hard time getting in uh, to try to get anybody to get into lahaina at the time i i had a mission i wanted to find my artist uh whatever i could and just kind of say goodbye to my store and try to find whatever i could there would be some bronzes some stainless steel hopefully some glass something as a memento of what happened uh, I had a, a, a friend of mine that uh, an art, one of the artists that had a, a truck with the big uh, um, fire department sticker on it. So we talked our way in, long story short, we talked our way in for, through about four roadblocks. And we, we did end up all the way at the top of the top of the hill where the bypass is. And we walked in uh, to Lahaina after the fires. So it was still smoldering. Uh, it was a point where, where you know, it was right, literally right after the fire. So there was only a couple people that actually were down there and that it was pre pretty much media it was the only ones they they were down there because no one no one had made it back down there yet and when we walked through there i found some interesting stuff like the basketball player the air sumo basketball player which uh you know was stainless steel about five foot tall and uh you seen it coming out of the ashes i sent you some pictures of that but uh yeah we found some scott hansons we found some even found the dennis mathis in one of dennis's uh metal pieces we found but we found um we found arena's work we found um, so, some of the big dogs you've seen some of the pictures with five foot dogs where the dogs are coming out of the ash because all three floors were ash so the only thing that was sticking up was some of the bigger bronzes you could see it and i knew where everything was at because i had them you know they were laying exactly where they were the only thing i didn't find is i didn't find the safe so so maybe someone kidnapped the safe so but, bill you know i mean and then you you also took pictures of front street i mean how, oh yeah can, how describe the feeling of you when you were back there really taking those pictures and then how did it make you feel if you could describe it well that that's that was the heart-wrenching thing about the whole thing because you know it was you know uh, you know there was so many businesses it was hard because when i walked by fleetwood fleetwood sign was still out there you know fleetwood's uh building was completely completely down but you know the, the, it was all gutted but fleetwood sign so i got some really interesting pictures of that what i knew was going to come back and it did come back i knew when we got down to uh, you know the uh, when it got to the banyan tree i knew for a fact that the banyan tree was going to come back that it was going to live through that so uh, a lot of everything you could see there's no coming back to you know the hardest part probably is cultural parts of the lahaina all the stuff that's been there for for years to 
you know, you, you get you get out with your life. You're happy about that. But it was really sad. And everybody, because a lot of the older people, I mean, they've had those in the family for 100 years. That's why, you know, people say that they don't sell their building. They, they've had it forever. They're not going to sell it. And uh, and uh, now now I don't know what they're what they're going to do. They, you know, at some of them were my neighbors were old. You know, some were probably 80, 90 years old. I used to have coffee and talk to them and stuff in the mornings every day. And you know, they had incredible stories of Lahaina. So that was the hard part to to know what happened to other people. With me, of course, I, you know, I'm going to roll through it, and I'm probably not going to do another gallery. But I got two other really big businesses. I'm going back in Maui right now. I'm working on the details this afternoon so i am probably going to get back to maui i won't do another store uh my friends that do have the galleries i talked to them last night a couple of them they're they're trying to find out what they're going to do you know and uh, you know i heard this morning cheeseburger in paradise she's not they're not coming back they started their business at cheeseburger the same time time i did 36 years ago we started at the same time under construction but I read this morning that they're not coming back. And a lot of the businesses, they'd love to come back. But I think the reality is it's five to 10 years. I'm, I'm saying eight years. And I've heard some people say five or six. But I, I'm thinking it's eight to 10 years before you're going to have a, anything that even closely looks like Lahaina again. So, Bill, I mean, you know when it finally sunk in where you were able to really comprehend that Lahaina is just totally devastated where Lahaina is literally just gone I mean I, I haven't got to that point yet oh man I, I mean I still wake up at night like a lot of people do I'm sure that you know that this really happened you know you gotta pinch yourself and say you know and this is months later and that's still you know and I've heard from other people sometimes it takes longer for other people it didn't hit me as hard at the beginning as it's hit me lately you know, to wake up in the morning and say, well, you know, I don't have a store there to go to Lahaina. I don't have a reason to fly to Maui anymore because, you know, my main house has always been Oahu, but I've, I was spending a lot of time on Maui. I love Maui. Uh, the now, people, Bill, tell me um, about um, your employees. I mean, did they survive and what happened to their houses? Well, that was that was pretty interesting, too. All my employees and their families made it out. Now, the couple, a couple of them lost some houses and one of them had also that they can't move back into right next to Lahaina. And the, the, it was weird because that whole housing uh, in Hanomo or whatever it's called, it's right next to Lahaina. Now you've probably seen the video of that there's only a couple houses in that whole subdivision that burnt, they're all a brand new subdivision. Um, and there was only a couple houses that got burnt down, but they, they won't be able to go for 18 months uh, because of the water issues. So they got a house that they can't move into. Uh, so that the the that whole west side of Lahaina, I don't you know timing. I don't know when when it's gonna you know get to a point where anybody can actually go back and do. They're talking about opening the schools, but when you walk around out there, I don't know how they're gonna do that in Lahaina. I mean, it's it's a mess. Absolutely. And Bill, you you have both of my books. You actually bought my books for your employees as I well. Bought, I, I bought your books for my employees. It's an amazing book, and I. I've enjoyed it. And uh, being a tennis player like you, I mean, uh, I get it. And I love, I love, I love the books and love what you do. I've loved all the guests. I watched all your shows. Of course, you send me your shows and I love all the different shows you do. And it's, it's, it keeps me pumped up myself. You know, I have a couple of friends that write some books and stuff and uh, yours are, yours are very motivating. So I, I really enjoy reading. No, oh, thank you, Bill. And, and that's my Bill. employees did. You know, so obviously, you know, I talk a lot about mindset and, and there's the difference that I say between a victim mindset and a victor mindset. And obviously, Rusty, is that I my mean, everyone in Maui, they're like, they're, they're having mental health issues because of this situation, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I want, I want everyone to, I want to inspire them to choose that victor mindset because you know, anyone, I mean, in that situation, in that type of adversity, it's so common to fall into the victim mindset, right? Well, exactly. Exactly. And I think a lot of people have did that. And I think you've got to just put your pants back up and, you know, go back and make things work again, because you're going to, adversity is going to hit you all through life. So that's what your book says. That's what any positive book comes. And that's what you got to do. And that's, you know, of course, I've, I'm going into more businesses. I'm 
uh, old as you can see and it, it's not stopping me i'm going to go back in and do some more fun stuff in business because i think that's what you have to do is get get over adversity and and get it to a positive way and that's what i'm that's what i'm going to do and that's what uh well a lot of people are doing in line i think there's a lot of positive energy on different maybe moving in different directions that you're used to and sometimes that's not a terrible thing yeah no bill you're so right um you know i always say that some people will will experience deeper levels of adversities than others and you know anytime there's you know there's threatenings of life and there's possibilities of death you cannot get any deeper than that and choosing the right choice to to have that victor mindset it's exactly what i just said there it's about choices and i want to inspire everyone on maui that was affected by it to really choose to be positive to see what they can do to uh, move forward as hard as it is but i i always share with people that um happy people focus on what they have and unhappy people focus on things that they don't have what are your thoughts about that I'm 100% agreeable. I mean, there's a, as the old expression goes, there's a glass that's half empty or half full. I try to keep it full all the time, whether it's, it's sitting on the bottom of the glass, I'm still on the positive end because that's how, that's how you have to go through life. I think you have to keep a, you know, you're going to be throwing some things in your life and you just got to be able to pull up your pants and get over it and say, I'm going to get, I'm going to get over this and I'm going to, I'm going to succeed. And that's what you have to do. And that's what any entrepreneurs or any business or, anybody does i think and it's uh you know it's it's a it's hard times for a lot of people but i i see uh, as they're saying maui strong there's a lot of people that are maui strong i've been back three times and all three times i'm encouraged that uh maui's going to come back stronger than ever so bill in hindsight what what do you think could have been done to make things better i know the the winds were so like strong and you fanning the flames that's that's the hardest situation in fires but in hindsight what what could have been done to make things better well that's a you know it's a it's a million dollar question i guess i mean the poles from what i've heard the poles could have been twice as thick and not fell down <laughs> you know they, they were rated for a certain amount of wind speed and it was rated half of what they were supposed to, but that's just, you know, from what I've read, you know, and there's so much out there right now to know, you, you know, to look, be a quarterback and look at what well, I could have did this or that, you know, you re really look at, you know, I know the police and the fire department and all those guys, they, you know, they, their own houses burned up to save other people's houses. So I think, you know, everybody get, did the best they could with what they were dealt with. I mean, it was, it was so intense. If you, <laughs> if you see where I was in it, you know, or as a policeman and you know you look at it yeah i would have did this and this as a quarterback looking as after the game's over and <laughs> looking at your films but when you're in the middle of it it's uh you know i i, I wouldn't want to be in some of the positions that some of the people are in and having to deal with what they've dealt with from you know different aspects of the media or the social media or whatever because i you know there was a lot of people that did a lot of for a lot of people in Lahaina and um, you know I know who some of them are and I'm proud of those guys to be honest which I mean uh, the, I've, I've had a lot of police friends there I had a lot of firemen friends and you know some of the upper management sometimes you wonder do, did they make the right decisions but that's uh they did what they did and what they thought was right at the time I guess man Bill but, you know what what you're looking for um, right but, yeah um, you know earlier you mentioned about you've are guesstimating maybe five to 10 years of, you know, to rebuild. Do yeah. My guess was, my guess was eight years. And, and that's why I, you know, my, 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 the guy that owned my building, I've tried to get it from him a couple of times, so he wouldn't sell it to me, but uh, he's younger than me and I want to kick him in the butt, but uh, he, he immediately started talking to me, Bill, let's do another gallery. Let's go in and build another gallery. And I looked at him and say, <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I think, I'm I'm at a point now, eight years later, shit, I'll be lucky to be someone's gonna be pushing me around in one of those uh, little little push cart things. So I, I don't I don't see myself doing another gallery in, in Lahaina. You know, I've been offered some galleries over on Oahu and I've actually thought about it. 
because I, I like being around art and I got my son to give it to anyway. So my son, Brian, who has the gallery in Haleiwa, me and him built that one together. And it's probably the coolest gallery in the United States, the one that me and him built and designed together. So he's the one that kind of nudged me to do the Lahaina thing to begin with. But when I got offered, I said, Brian, I got offered to do Lahaina. He says, dad, you got to do it. You got to do it. And I'm looking at, yeah, you just want, you just want me to go the, <laughs> go out. You can take it over later. But uh, yeah. So, so Bill, I mean, seeing what front street is like right now, I mean, front street, everybody wanted to go to front street and, and then just hearing how people were just jumping into the ocean to just try to, you know, get away from the heat and the fire and the smoke and the embers. I mean, it, I mean, front street will obviously never be the same. Um, what are your thoughts though? I mean, are they, do you think it should be built a certain way or rebuilt a certain way? Well, I really, I would like to see it built the way it was and, and go back to the way it was, but there's, you know, there's, there's people talking about they'll never, and I think it was in this morning's, uh, you know, read that I read that there, there probably won't be a ocean, anything on the ocean front anymore uh, in certain parts of Lahaina that used to be there. Uh, I don't, and I probably, I'm probably guessing the same thing. I'd like to see re redeveloped in a, a similar fashion to, you know, like what I didn't want to see is something that like happened at International Marketplace. I mean, they took, you know, took a, a brand new kind of sterile look to International Marketplace instead of making it, which everybody loved, the, the reason they did it. And I'm hoping Lahaina is not the same way that they don't do that, you know. And you know what I'm saying by that? It's just, it's uh, to me, you know, you, you don't want a sterile look, you want a Lahaina look. So if you're going to come back and build, build like Lahaina, I mean, of course, it's not going to be exactly, but try to get that, that look and that feel, uh, the cultural look and feel of why people love Lahaina, you know, whale in town that it was. I mean, it's, it's, it's magic. It's magical. And that's why so many people come down and, you know, with my new businesses, that's part than I'm saying, I'm how much, how much am I going to get hurt by, you know, Lahaina, Lahaina not being there. I'm, I'm taking over a couple of big businesses that I'm looking at doing right now. I'll have to see how that one rolls out. So Bill, after that experience, um, when, when you're looking at the big picture of life right now, what is your advice to others? On. And I think, uh, you know, uh, I'm getting older, but I think that you got to keep your mind going. You got to keep positive and keep going in the right direction and and make time to friends and family and but do work and and keep your mind going on things that uh that you really want to do in life i'm not ready to, to throw in completely yet i'm ready to slow the train down a little bit but i think uh the younger people i talked to my a couple of my gallery directors that that did their store burnt down as well. And I talked to them, we had an hour conversation yesterday about what they should do. Should they go to Florida? Should they go to Vegas? Should they go to California? Or should they stick it out in, in Maui? And I'm saying, well, well, your heart's in Maui. You know, if you can figure out a way to kind of make it work in Maui, maybe that's what you, you got to go where your heart's at. And that's, uh, and they're, they're hardcore Maui people. I don't see them really leaving. They're not the type that would go to Waikiki, but they're very Maui type so I, I totally run stick deep. with it. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to the heart, man. Bill, yeah, that's uh, that. Bill, I want to thank you for taking time and to really share, you know, what happened on, you know, just escaping the fires and just so happy that, that you survived and you're here today. I'm really happy I'm here. And it was, uh, it was quite the adventure. I mean, I'll tell you one last thing. It felt like in a Arnold Schwarzenegger movie where he flies on the on the motorcycle, he flies through the flames. I felt like that. Jeez. Aloha. <laughs> that was fun. Rusty, always good to talk to you, buddy. Thank you, Bill. And thank yeah. you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Bill and I will inspire you to deal with your adversities in a positive way and to enjoy and appreciate every single day in your life. Aloha.